Hey guys, this is Brian, aka Texas Treasures, and today I'm bringing you a video. Um, in May, for the past 30 days, I hit a big milestone. I broke the $10,000 gross sales amount that's on Poshmark and eBay. So I wanted to share with you 10 things, 10 takeaways, or 10 things that I've learned that may help you as you try to grow your Poshmark and eBay sales. Um, so if you find this type of content valuable, go ahead and hit the like button below. Subscribe with the red button if you want to see more of these type of videos. And also comment below any questions or suggestions or ideas that you may have. Let's get straight into it. Now, um, today's video, the genesis, the, the thought seed that where this came from, I am a member of Chris Chris's Patreon group. And he has a morning group. Um, his YouTube channel is Daily Refinement, by the way. And he has great content there. And I am in his Patreon group. And every morning, uh, we spend about an hour working on reselling, brainstorming, setting goals, talking through problems. It's a great accountability group. And uh, and, and this is where today's video came from. He, he asked, how, how was May sales? Um, what are th some things you've tried, you've learned, and what are some things you want to do for June? So that, that's where the idea came from. So I want to give him credit for that. And I'm just going to go into a little bit more depth about my experience. All right. First up, um, now these sales over the past 30 days. I'm going to start with Poshmark, and then I'll get to eBay. And the cool thing about Poshmark is they have the sales report. And you can configure the dates that you want to, um, to look at. And see, these are the past 30 days. And right here you can see 46.43 is the gross sales on Poshmark. And then they will give you your net sales because they take out 20%. So that's 35.81. So once again, 4,600 and change on Poshmark. Um, and then we'll look at the eBay. Well, let's go ahead and, and look at the eBay real quick. And then on eBay, the past 31 days, we're at 5,500. So 5,500 plus 46, that's about 10.1. So definitely over the $10,000 amount. And that doesn't include, um, I have a few sales on OfferUp and I think one or two on Mercari. So over 10,000. All right, let's talk Poshmark. Um, and right now I do have someone sharing my closet. Um, and that is one of the tips we'll talk about. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it right now. This, this is the number one, the number one tip. Is you have to share your closet on Poshmark. Poshmark rewards you for being active. That makes it unique. Um, I used to share my closet myself, and, and I still do sometimes. But it just takes up a lot of time. So in my opinion, uh, tip number one is share your closet or get someone to share it for you. I've had my daughter share my closet for me in the past. Currently, I use a, um, I use a, a virtual assistant. This is a person that shares it for me. And by the way, since I've been using this, my sales have probably gone up five to 10 times, guys. And it frees up my time to do more listing, to do more sourcing, to make videos. So I would strongly encourage, encourage you to give it a try. There's a link down below where you can you can be linked to my virtual assistant. Um, so check that out and, and look at the pricing. I'm using the package where you get 4,000, they call it clicks per day, and I use all 4,000 of mine on shares. Plus I will do some other shares of my closet myself throughout the day and especially at that 9 p.m. party. The reason sharing is so important is because every time, look, all right, let's do this. Let's look. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you like right here. Um, silver Celtic knot necklace. So if you search Celtic Celtic, huh, hello, talking silver Celtic knot necklace. Well, that's on people. We don't want people. We want to look at listings. So if you look at that under listings, and by the way, uh, they the default is by just shared on that, that snap snap seller tool which is a great app but i'm not talking about that right this second now you can change it from price low to high just in but the default is just shared and you can see my item was shared recently so it's the third item that comes up 
Now watch this. Um, as soon as I share this item, let's see. Uh, let's go back here. Actually, let's go to my closet. And I'll show you. So you can see they're sharing, they're sharing. Close that. Right here, here it is. So as I share it to my followers, well, that's because, all right, now let's look it up again and you will see silver, Celtic, not necklace. Refresh it. Oh, my internet's slow. <laughs> We refresh it. This should move over in the ranking. So here we go. Refresh. Yeah, what's up? Oh, yeah. Andrew, my lister is shipping out of watch. Um, gosh, this snap seller tool is annoying. But anyway, share it. And then refresh it. And it should move to the number one item that was just shared and it's not doing it I guess maybe just because I just barely shared it but you can see it was just recently shared and it's on the top row um, so sharing your closets really important and I would once once again recommend getting that as many shares in a day as you can so that's the number one rule okay number two number two rules or tips to help improve your sales is and I can't show this one very well right now because my closet is being shared is to keep your best items at the very top right I do a lot of jewelry I do a lot of replenishables so my items that sell the most I keep those at the top every day I take a few minutes to keep those items at the top let's say you're not selling replenishables well what could you do then well that's it, it, okay let's click on closet versus boutique and you could still keep like your best pair of shoes you know you got a pair of ll beans maybe your high price items you could keep those items at the top so you want to keep your best items at the top whether they're replenishables or one-offs either way um, because when people go into your closet whether it's the mobile app or on the desktop app they're they're only going to see your top two or your top four items so you and you're gonna get a lot of eyeballs on on your page so you want those top items to be visible so that's tip number two keep your best items at the top all right tip number three on Poshmark is um, offers to likers okay offers to likers throughout the day people will like your items um, they will also put your items in a bundle and so what I do is twice a day once in the morning once in the evening, I go into all, first of all, I'll start with my bundles and I find bundles um, that were created one day ago, like this one was created one day ago. So I give them a day because they might just buy it right, right out, give them a little time to think about it. And so they have these four things in a bundle and then I would send them an offer. I already did this this morning so you can see the offer I sent. Um, I offered them 40 because I do a bundle offer uh, three for 30 they can pick any three items priced in my closet $20 or less and I will send them the offer for $30 they pick four items so I sent the offer for 40 um, so and, and you, you know even if you don't have a bundle offer like that you can still give them a discount maybe give them 10 20 30 percent off for doing the bundle so I do that first I do check my comments to see if there's any questions but then I come to the likes right and what I'll do in the morning when I get up I'm having my coffee, I will go in here. And actually, I will do it on my phone because I found it's quicker. But it's the same concept. You come on here, you click it, whether it's your phone or your desktop, and you can send an offer or a price drive drop. Um, I'm going to do the private offers to likers. And you can pick 10, 20, 30%. Let's, I'm going to do 20%, apply the offer. You do have to give a shipping discount and submit. And that will go to any anyone who has liked your your item um, recently who you haven't sent an offer to and I will do that for all of my liked items for the past 12 hours and then in the evening I will do the same thing and between the bundle offers and the offers to likers um, it generates sales for me every day 
So that, that to me, that's a must. So if you're not um, sending offers to likers and bundle offers, I think you really need to. It will boost your sales. This is one of the keys I've used to help get me to the $10,000 in gross sales. All right, number five in um, 10 tips I can give you that I've used to get to $10,000 in sales on Poshmark and eBay. Number five is cross list, right? We're on Poshmark, but we're going to be talking about eBay in a minute. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You want to be diversified. So learn a couple of platforms, learn what sells best on those platforms, and list, and list items in multiple platforms. That will increase your sell-through rate. More people see it, so naturally it, your items are going to sell faster. Um, for me, jewelry, I will put um, mostly just on Poshmark. Now, if it's if it's shoes, I will put like these shoes, and that's a terrible picture. I've had these listed a long time. Like these shoes right here, these Danskin. Um, these would be listed here on Poshmark. I also have the same shoes listed on eBay. And a third platform I use is OfferUp. Um, I'm not talking about OfferUp today because I'm just kind of scaling that up a little bit. But between definitely Poshmark and eBay. So list your items in more than one place. And there's other platforms out there. You have Mercari. You have Grilled. You have... Um, your local marketplaces, you could do Facebook Marketplace, you could do Five Miles. There's so many platforms out there. Um, spend the time, become good at one. I mean, don't, I wouldn't say if you're a brand new seller, go out there and list on 10 platforms because you're going to have problems. Because when you sell it, the, the caveat to that is when you sell it on one platform, you do have to take it down off the other platforms and you got to keep up on, on top of that. And there are programs like List Perfectly for a fee, they will. Um, they will make it easier. There's software you can use where you can click one button and basically it will transfer that and cross list it for you. You just have to review it, maybe edit a couple of items. All right, so, so those are five tips from Poshmark. Let's move over to eBay and let's take a look at eBay. So on eBay, and I've been putting a lot of effort into eBay over the past month. <clears throat> As you can see, my past 31 days, my gross sales are up to 5,500. Um, and here, here's the summary chart. The good thing about eBay is they give you a lot of tools, a lot of things that you can use to tweak your, your selling and to analyze it. Um, what I would say is use this performance tab. It can be your best friend. And like this traffic tab is really important. So about a month ago, I was only doing about $1,000 a month on eBay. And when I joined uh, Daily Refinement's Patreon group, we were talking and I wasn't using I wasn't using promoted listings at the time. So I made some changes. I went from zero percent and this was right back here. It doesn't go this far back, but around April 26, you can see my impressions were only down here. And it, impressions are like the number of times here it gives you the information. Impression counts when a link to your listing appears on eBay and the buyers will one click away. So it's in their search results basically. My impressions were only like 40,000 before I made some changes and what I did is I promoted most of my items unless it's a really hot item that doesn't need it I promoted them at 1% I offered free returns on most items unless the shipping's really expensive and I started offering um, free shipping on items that would go first class because all those items boost you in the eBay algorithm which means you'll get more impressions which means you'll get more page views, which means you'll get more sales. And you can see, I, I wish it showed up back here, but these were down here before I did it. And then you began to see that these went up, like 122,000 impressions on, what was that, April 5th. And I'll talk about the other peaks. And here on this date, uh, what is that, April, May, Sunday, May 17th, I had 141,000. Now, the other thing I do... Um, is I do sales. The good thing about eBay, they let you run sales. So I do a tiered sales. What that means is, first of all, when I'm pricing my items, I price them at the high end of the market. I look at the solds, the comps, and let's say I'm selling a pair of shoes and one similar, the highest one sold for 100. So I would take the 100 and I actually multiply it by 1.25. So I'd list mine at 125. Well, you'd say, well, that's too high. Yeah, it probably is, but here's the thing. 
eBay rewards you for running sales. You want to do all these things to boost your items up in the search results. So I start off the first week of the month. Um, I will do a 20% off sale on my whole store. And then the second week, I go up to 30%. Third week is 40, and I finish out the month with a 50% off sale. And what happens, and that's why you'll see these Sundays peaking, because that's when my sales end, and a new sale will start. And generally throughout the month, as the sales get bigger, I mean, not the sales, as the sales I offer grow larger in percentage, so do the results. And here's one little interesting thing I talked about this morning, that as your store builds momentum, I believe eBay rewards you for your activity. They reward you for your sales. And so your store will begin to build momentum. And like Monday, I forgot to create my new sale. It was a holiday. But the interesting thing is I was looking at my sales. I was still getting sales, but they were for full price on many of my items that weren't on sale. So <laughs> what I'm now going to be doing, this was talking about the Patreon group. I think at least one, maybe two days a week. So my sales usually end on Sunday night. So Monday, maybe even Tuesday, I'm, I'm going to do no sell because Sunday that momentum peaks. And I think you get a carryover at least into Monday, maybe even into Tuesday. So leave those days with no sell. That's what I'm going to be doing and, and evaluating how that's going to work out. And then probably Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, start my sale for the week, run it Wednesday through Sunday to rebuild that momentum. So once again, things you can do use that'll help you on eBay, use promoted listings. And in June, I'm going to bump it up to 2%. And then I can compare how my sales were um, like right here. That Because you can it compares to the previous 30 days and see all those green arrows, right? Up 300% in traffic. Uh, page views was up 50% and sold was up 60%. So in June, I'll raise the promoted percentage to 2%. And then I'll be able to evaluate that at the end of June to see how did that do versus the 1% and then make a decision. Do I want to keep it at 2%? Do I want to drop it to 1%? Do I want to try it at 3%? So you have all this beautiful data that will help you do that. Um, so use promoted listings. I'm doing, I would say use um, sales. I'm doing the weekly tiered sales. So by the end of the month, like I'm going to start one here this today. It's supposed to, actually that sale should start in about 30 minutes. It's 50% off my whole store. I expect the rest of the week to be crazy busy with sales. And it will help me clear out some of my old inventory that maybe wasn't my best purchases. And you just got to make sure you price your items high enough if you're going to do that model. Um, free returns. The free returns is important. If you can afford to do it, uh, eBay will give you a 10% final value credit fee for that. You get boosted in the, the search algorithm. I also do fast shipping. I'll either do one day or sometimes same day shipping. So with free shipping and free returns, you're maxed out. So you're going to get the fast and free <laughs> logo, right? Um, and let me see, free shipping, free returns. And the last piece of advice I would give, number 10, I just ran through four, you know, six, seven, eight, and nine. Once again, promote a listing, tip number six, free returns, tip seven, free shipping if you can afford it. Now, obviously, don't do that. Like I sold a stereo today, and I did not do free shipping. I, I charged $40. And you've got to be able to know to look at the comps, right? If you've got an item with a very fast sell-through rate, and there's very few others out there, then you don't need to do the promoter listings. But I'm talking about when you're in a, a competitive market, right? Uh, free shipping, do the weekly sales or use eBay sales function. And number 10, the thing that's helped me over the past month get to $10,000 in sales, um, gross sales on eBay and Poshmark is bulk sourcing. During the pandemic, I um, wasn't able to go to the thrift store or go to garage sales. So I made a shift. I began um, buying storage units online where you can get a lot of inventory at one time. I was also doing some... Um, some other online auctions you could do you could do liquidation pallets um, there's so many ways to do this you could do online estate sales but the goal is to get a lot of inventory at a discounted price so that gives you a lot of margins to work with source you know source it grade it get the stuff listed on the right platforms if you'll do all these things guys um, I'm pretty sure your sales will go up 
So if you have any comments or questions or some suggestions, some things you think I missed, go ahead and put those in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate a like, a thumbs up. That helps out my video. Um, if you want to see more content like this, hit that red subscribe button. You can also hit the bell to be notified when new videos drop. And uh, that's it for today, guys. So I hope you found this useful. Let me know below. Um, be safe when you're out there sourcing. Until next time, this is Texas Treasures, and I'm out. Peace.